Hey guys, Steve here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. Out in the shop tonight to do another product review. Uh, this one is going to be on the Scrollnado dust collection system for your scroll saw. Uh, now, Chris has redesigned this and come up with this second version of the Scrollnado uh, that can be adapted to fit, I think, any scroll saw. I can't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to. So. I want to show you what you get when you order this thing, a little bit about how to install it. It's so simple to install that, that we won't go through too much of that. And we'll do a little demo cut to show how effective it is. The first thing I want to do here is show you what you're going to get in the package when you receive it. Um, comes in a white box. I don't know if this packaging will change. This might be a pre-production unit. But anyway, it'll come in a neatly wrapped package just like you see right here. Uh, it's going to have several parts and a set of instructions. It comes with two what he calls memory tubes and these will be what collects the dust above and below the table and I'll show you that installed on this saw here in a few minutes. It comes with A flexible hose that gets attached to the uh, dust collection system and to the cyclone separator, which I'll show you here in a second. It comes with these flexible plastic hoses that uh, are what you slide the memory hoses into and run them up along the edge of the saw. And another new feature that he's added, which is really cool is this little cyclone separator and what this does is this attaches to the vacuum and to the dust collection system and it collects the dust in this long tube which is easy to take off remove and empty and it keeps it from clogging the filter on your vacuum cleaner now it does not come with the vacuum cleaner one of the vacuum cleaners that Chris recommends and I believe this is sold at Walmart, is the Hyper Tough, I guess that's what it's called, 1.5 gallon wet dry vacuum. You do not need a very powerful vacuum for this system to be effective. This vacuum that he gave me to trial this system with is this right here. It's as small as you can see from my hand. It's a very small vacuum. Uh, I just got have the uh, the cyclone separator attached to it with a hose so to keep it steady. Normally you'd probably put this down on the floor underneath your desk or underneath your stand. Uh, so you don't need a very powerful, this is just a two horsepower, um, a peak horsepower vacuum cleaner. 1.5 gallon. But it does not come with a vacuum so you have to supply your own vacuum and in most cases you're already going to have one so that's not going to be a problem. So that's what you get with it. Uh, one extra thing that Chris recommends is these memory hoses are pretty reliable but it gets a little bit difficult to get the top one exactly where you want it sometimes. So in the instruction Chris recommended using some uh, copper wire, some heavy gauge copy, copper wire that you can slide into this hose and then make it conform to the shape easier. And I have done that on the one that's installed here and I'll show you that when we get to it. But that's everything you need. Okay, I'm gonna to try to quickly show you how to put this thing together. Take your cyclone separator, take your flexible steel wrapped hose, put the cyclone separator hose in the bottom port of the cyclone separator just like that. Okay. The other end of the hose is going to accept both of these black tubes and to make sure you have a good secure fit you're going to find a little piece of plastic foam or foam in the kit. You're going to take that foam and sandwich it between the two hoses just like that. And then you're going to take that whole assembly and put it in the other end of the hose. 
just like that. So now we've got the hose connected to the separator and then over to the two black tubes. At the other end of the black tubes, you take your memory tubes, slide them in to each end. That's all there is to it. Now we're ready to install it on the saw. The vacuum cleaner gets attached to the top of the cyclone separator and the kit comes with several adapters for to help you fit your vacuum cleaner to the separator. Also included in the kit are these sticky back, uh, we'll call them brackets. You have four of them that will fit on the black hose like that. So the black hose goes in the bracket, you take the tape off, you put it on the side of your saw. There's also a smaller set of two that go on the memory tube. So you will uh, attach these to the side of your saw in a strategic place to where when you get done, the hose that runs along the bottom of the scroll saw table will be right behind the bottom of the blade underneath the table and the top one will be behind or to one side the blade above the table. And I'm going to get you a little closer here to look at the scroll saw that I've attached it to and I ended up installing it on the uh, uh, 21 inch wind scroll saw that I reviewed a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I'll show you how it went on that because the process is going to be identical with any scroll saw. Okay, now that we've got the uh, hose assembly assembled, it's time to attach it to the scroll saw. And this will be a little different on every scroll saw because you're going to find different points of attachment that you need to use. You might even find that you have to uh, cut the tube down in length a little bit depending on the size of your scroll saw. Uh, but it's flexible enough, I think you'll be able to get it mounted to any saw. Now you can see here's the hose that comes from the separator. There's our double hose with our foam insert blocking out the entry to this uh, hose that goes to the separator. Then we've got our two tubes. This tube runs to the top memory hose, the back of the top of the blade above the table. The other tube runs along the bottom of the table and is pointed directly at the back of the blade at the bottom. And again, here's the little sticky back bracket that, we use, that I use to attach it to this upper arm. So you may have to change the size of these brackets by cutting them in half. Uh, you may have to change the size of the hose. Whatever you have to do to get it adjusted to where it is at the back of the blade, above and below the table. Now, I talked about this copper wire uh, in the last section and it'd be hard to see but that copper wire that I've got in here runs all the way back to about probably two inches into this black hose. It's a good idea to have at least one pretty sharp bend to make sure that wire stays in place and doesn't get moved back and forth uh, but that thing uh, makes it to where you can adjust the uh, position of this memory tube much easier and it stays in place better. You can do it without the copper wire but I think most people are going to want to try that. I ended up getting some 8 gauge copper wire which is probably too thick. Uh, you could probably go considerably thinner. As long as when you bend it it will hold its shape it's probably good enough. Uh, this just bends kind of, it's kind of difficult to bend. But I was able to get it pointed at the back of the blade and it does stay there pretty well exactly the same on the bottom. I've got it uh, in one of these brackets uh, mounted to the bottom arm of the saw and I've got the memory tube pointing right towards the back of the blade. So each, every saw is going to be different like I said so you might have to adjust the length of these hoses uh, or whatever you have to do to get them pointed there but it's very versatile system and I think you can install it on just about any squirrel saw. Now it's time to run a couple tests and see how effective uh, this system is at removing the dust. Um, I'm going to start a five minute timer and I'm going to cut this quarter inch Baltic burst plywood for five minutes without the vacuum turned on and we'll see what kind of uh, 
dust collection we get, and then we will uh, run the test over again with the vacuum on and see the results. So I won't put you through this whole thing, but I'm going to start the uh, timer now. And we're on five minutes, and I'm going to start cutting without the vacuum. Okay, there's our alarm that we've cut for five minutes. Let's gather up the dust on the top of the table and see what it looks like. I'll take and sweep it into a little pile here so you can get a pretty good idea of what we have. And I will uh, take a photograph, a still photograph, underneath the table to see what kind of dust we have down there. And we'll go from there. So there's what we've got. Let's, uh, let's zoom in here a little bit and see if we get a close look. There you go. So there's the dust that we generated. Pretty good pile. That was five minutes worth of cutting uh, one quarter inch multi purpose plywood. So now I'll get everything cleaned up, take a picture underneath, and when I come back, we will do the same test with the vacuum on. Got the top of the table all cleaned up, vacuum and blew out the underside of the table. Everything's clean again. We're going to start the same test. Uh, with the five minute timer on quarter inch Baltic versus plywood. Again, I won't make you sit through the whole thing. We'll get it started and then we'll come back at the end. So here goes our timer, five minutes. Let's start cutting. <laughs> and there's our five minute timer. So we will Again, shake the dust off, pile it up, and see how it looks. Let me zoom in here one more time, let you get a pretty good look. I think you can see that our pile of dust is pretty effectively minimized by, I would say we got at the top of the table 95 plus percent of the dust that was generated. Uh, again, I will put a, a photograph of the underside of the table and I think you'll see we might even have better results under the table than we did above. Okay, I think you can see for yourself that the results of the Scronado test come out pretty solid. Uh, we're we're easily getting 95 plus percent of the dust both top and bottom of the table and almost all the scroll saws that have built-in dust collectors they only collect the dust from the bottom and what little bit they can pull through from the blade hole uh, so having that dust collection on top of the table I think is really significant because the really fine particles of dust that get up in the air and they float for a long time are what's so harmful to you and although I don't have any proof because you can't see it I'm fairly confident that this thing is collecting almost all of those fine particles of dust. Um, I will put a link to this product, an Amazon link, in the description of the video. Uh, the price is $59.99. Um, it comes with everything I showed you at the beginning of the video. You will need to supply your vacuum. That could be a positive because you might want to add more power or a quieter vacuum or whatever you have on hand. Um, I do think that it's important to buy yourself a piece of copper wire to make this memory tube memory a little more efficient. It's easier to adjust with that copper wire in there. But other than that, just as I was with the very first scroll needle, I'm impressed with this one too. It does a really good job. and. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have any major complaints about it. It's easy to install. It comes with enough uh, attachments, enough brackets and everything that I think you'll be able to put it on any scroll saw you want to put it on. So that's my review of the scroll NATO. I hope you enjoyed the review. Thanks for being here with me at the scroll saw workshop and we will catch you next time.